Hello guys, now in this video, we'll be discussing about vaginal prolapse. Guys, we have already completed the topic of a uterine prolapse and the management of uterine prolapse in different different conditions. Now let's see what exactly is vaginal prolapse. It just same like the uterine prolapse where the vagina is protruding out of the introitus. Okay, now please concentrate that vaginal prolapse will also present with the other conditions something like cystocele, urethrocele, enterocele. Why? Guys, please concentrate because of the anatomical relationship of vagina with the other structures, vaginal prolapse will be associated with other conditions also. Let me make it a simple like while explaining the diagram. Guys, please concentrate that this is the anterior vaginal wall and this is the posterior vaginal wall. Guys, please concentrate anterior vaginal wall is in relation with the urinary bladder anteriorly and anterior vaginal wall lower part is in relation with the urethra that too anteriorly. Now, the posterior vaginal wall is divided into three parts. Okay, the posterior vaginal wall is three parts. Okay, the upper one third, three parts. Okay, the upper one third. The upper one third of the posterior vaginal wall the upper one third is in relationship with upper one third is in Douglas. Okay. And the middle one third is in close relationship posteriorly with the rectum. And the lower one third. Okay. Is in close relationship with the perineum and perineal body. So please concentrate that prolapse of the anterior vaginal wall. Okay. I am talking about the prolapse of the anterior vaginal wall. See now this anterior vaginal wall is coming down, prolapsing vaginal wall is prolapses out, now prolapses out, vaginal wall is falling out, prolapses out, so the urinary bladder will fall down and the urethra will also going to be a fall out. So please remember whenever there is prolapse of the upper two third of the anterior vaginal wall, upper two third of the anterior vaginal wall then you will call it as a cystocele why because urinary bladder is in close proximity uh, close proximity with the anterior vaginal wall that too above and whenever there is prolapse of the lower one third of the anterior vaginal wall then you will be having urethrocele why because urethra is falling down okay so this urethra will be a uh, falling down like this okay now let's see the prolapse of the posterior vaginal wall. See whenever there is prolapse of the upper one third of the posterior vaginal wall then it is associated with enterocele why because in the pouch of Douglas there are intestines so it is associated with enterocele intestines are falling out and whenever there is a prolapse of the middle one third of the posterior vaginal wall you will be having a rectocele why because rectum is in close proximity with the middle one third of the posterior vaginal wall and whenever there is a prolapse of the lower one third of the uh, vaginal wall then you will be having lax perineum right? because it is in close relationship with the perineum and perineal body. So what is the important point I want to put into your mind is prolapse of the anterior and posterior vaginal walls are associated with cystocele, urethrocele, Introcele, rectocele or lax perineum according to the part of vaginal wall which is a prolapsing. Okay. So, after that, the important points here you, you need to keep in mind are the management part. So, how you are going to manage? See, we have seen the management of uterine prolapse in different different conditions. How you are going to manage a uterine prolapse in a nulliparous woman, multiparous woman or if a woman is having any contraindications or in a congenital uterine prolapse, how you are going to manage? We have seen that. That's completed. Now, here we are seeing the management of vaginal prolapse. See, whenever there is a cystocele or urethrocele, when you will be having cystocele or urethrocele, guys, whenever there is anterior vaginal wall prolapse, anterior vaginal prolapse is associated with cystocele, urethrocele or in combination, cysto-urethrocele, a combination of things. So, what you are going to do is anterior calporaphy. Why? Because this is anterior vaginal wall, right? So, you are going to do anterior calporaphy as a management. So, whenever there is an enterocele, okay, the 
upper one third of the posterior vaginal wall. Then you will be doing Moskovitz repair or Halban repair or Meckel caldoplasty. They can ask you direct question. Moskovitz repair is done for introcil, not the rectocil, not the erythrocil or cystocil. So Moskovitz repair is done for introcil, Halban repair is done for same introcil, and Meckel caldoplasty is also done for enterocil. Now what to do if there is a rectocil or lax perineum? Now here the management is posterior calpo perineography. Okay, so this is the management of choice whenever there is a rectocil or laxed perineum. After this, let's see what is the management of vault prolapse. What is meant by this vault prolapse? Guys, for example, please concentrate that this is the vagina. Okay, this is the cervix and here is the uterus. See, whenever you have performed, whenever you have performed hysterectomy, that then you have removed the uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes. Okay, everything is removed. The uterus, cervix, fallopian tube. You are going to suture the above part of the vagina, the upper part of the vagina, you are going to suture. Now, there is a chance that this, this vault area, this upper part, now it can prolapse down. Now it can come something like this. Okay, that walls, vault can prolapse down. This vaginal vault, as it's not having a proper support, it can simply prolapse down. So what is the management of vault prolapse, guys? It is a vault suspension surgery. You have to suspend. Okay, you have to suspend this vault. Now what is that? It is sacral calpoplexy. Okay, sacral calpopexy. What we are going to do in sacral calpopexy? We are going to uh, put, uh, we are going to attach this vault and uh, simply we are going to put suture over the vault and we are going to attach it to the sacral bone posteriorly so that it won't come down. So that is sacral calpopexy or uterosacral suspension. Okay, so this is the surgery you can do or sacrospinous fixation. So important point to be noted here is that how you are going to manage vault prolapse. Simple. Sacral calpopexy or uterosacral suspension or sacrospinous fixation. These are the managements for the vault prolapse. And also remember that, see, it just looks like you know, calpo suspension. Calpo means vagina, we know that suspension. So, calpo suspension. Most of the students will be thinking that a calpo suspension is done for vault prolapse. No, calpo suspension, calpo suspension is done for is done for stress urinary incontinence not for vault prolapse. For vault prolapse, we have done sacral calpopexy or uterosacral suspension or sacrospinous fixation. That's what we have done for vault prolapse, not calpo suspension. Calpo suspension is done for stress urinary incontinence. Very, very important point. Okay. Now, after this, let's Discuss about the Kegel exercises. See what are these Kegel exercises? Guys, these Kegel exercises are done to make the musculature strong enough to hold the uterus and vagina in its place. Okay, actually these Kegel exercises are prescribed to those women who are at a risk of developing the uterine prolapse or even vaginal prolapse. See what are these Kegel exercises guys? See Kegel exercises are nothing but voluntary contraction of the like you no know, muscles which are supplying the uterus see whenever you are voluntary contracting the muscles which are supplying the uterus not supplying the uterus supporting the uterus like you know levator levator ani muscle see whenever you are contracting that muscles that muscular contraction increases the tone of those muscles and they can firmly support the uterus so these Kegels exercises are indicated in the women who are at a risk of developing uterine and vaginal prolapse. Okay, what we are doing here, voluntary contracting the muscles supporting the uterus and vagina. Then this can be done usually at three times a day and every time, like you know, you have to contract, hold the muscles and you have to relax. And if, like, you know, ten, ten, like you know, every time you have to do it for 10 times. See in the morning you have to do it for 10 times, in the afternoon, in the night. So, these exercises are the muscles, see, helping in the tightening the pelvic floor muscles. Okay, so those are some important points which need to be keep in mind. I hope the lecture is helpful. Thank you.